very good morning to you and a warm welcome again to our channel this morning. And uh, the Lord has placed upon my heart to just release a series of short meditations on uh, marriage. And I want to start off with a series on addressing some of the enemies that we that we face in, in marriage. And for today's session, I want to focus and I think on one of the greatest enemies of marriage, which is a lack of respect in marriage. We need to understand that respect is a cornerstone of any healthy relationship, and especially in such an intimate relationship as, as marriage. There are several passages in Scripture that emphasizes the importance of having mutual respect, mutual love, and mutual honor between spouses. And one of the most commonly cited passages regarding marriage and respect we can find in Ephesians 5 verse 33. For today's session, I'm going to make use of the Amplified Classic version of the scriptures. So just bear with me. And I'm going to read it to you in Ephesians 5, verse 33, it says, However, let each man of you, without exception, love his wife as being, in a sense, his very own self, and let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband, that she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates and esteems him and that she defers to him, praises him, and loves and admires him exceedingly. You know, if you go and you take some time and you go and study each one of these instructions that we receive in, in this uh, portion of passage, you will find that that can keep you busy for quite some time. And I want to encourage you that you will use this session of today just as a, as a seed to go and have a look at your marriage. Have a look at your covenantal relationship in marriage and see if you are doing all of these things that this scripture requires from us. Um, I also want to present to you another portion of scripture in 1 Peter 3, verse 1 to 4, where it says, In like manner, you married women, be submissive to your husbands. Subordinate yourselves as being secondary to and dependent on them, and adapt yourselves to them, so that even if any do not obey the word of God, they may be won over not by discussion, but by the godly lives of their wives. When they observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourselves, together with your reverence for your husband, you are to feel for him all that reverence includes, to respect, defer to, revere him, honor him, esteem him, appreciate him, prize him, and in the human sense to adore him, that is to admire, praise, be devoted to him, deeply love him, and to also enjoy your husband. It says in verse 3, Let not yours be the merely external adorning with elaborate interweaving and knotting of the hair, the wearing of jewelry or changes of clothes, but let it be the inward adorning and beauty of the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle and a peaceful spirit, which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. You know, I believe that in this verse, or a couple of verses, uh, we find actually a roadmap to successful marriage. And I know there's a lot of demand that is being placed here upon the wife being the one to do all these things. But I want to say to you, this does not only speak to the wife. You need to reciprocate 
if you are the husband in a similar manner towards your wife. So I want to encourage you who are married couples, take this verse, these verses, discuss it, meditate upon it, and see what is there in your marriage that you need to address and change to become truly a representation of a godly marriage in the environment in which you function, not only towards one another, but also in your family, in your home, where your children can, can see the Christ manifested in your relationship with one, of, one another. If we look at these two portions of Scripture that I've shared with you, you will see that these verses underscores the reciprocal nature of love and respect within the marriage relationship. And of course, I cannot keep or stop from referring also that remember, a marital relationship is a covenantal relationship. In addition to these scriptures that I've already mentioned, there are other passages in the scriptures as well that stress the importance of mutual respect and mutual honor between spouses. And one such a scripture we find in uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 19, that says, Husbands, love your wives. Be affectionate and sympathetic with them. And do not be harsh or bitter or resentful towards them. And I want to challenge you as husband that you search your heart. This is not a choice. It is an instruction to love your wife, to be affectionate towards her, to be sympathetic towards her, and not to be harsh or bitter or resentful towards her. The scripture is not here demanding that she must meet all your expectations. The scripture here does not demand that she must be nice to you. She must meet and do all that you expect of her from her. But it's instruction. Love your wife. So I want to challenge you this morning. How do you treat your wife? Do you treat her with respect? And sadly, I must say to you that in my journey through the years, I found many times in marriage, it's actually a hate relationship. Husbands hate their wives. They want to get rid of their wives. They want to get out of the marriage. And you need to repent. If you are one of these husbands, I want to say to you today, God is calling you to a place of repentance. God honors covenant. In the similar manner, you have to do the same. I want you to take a moment and look at the life of Christ. He hung on the cross. He died. His wife <laughs> basically killed him because we killed Christ on the cross. And what right do you as a husband have, and I as a husband have, to be any different? The demand is that we give up our lives sacrifice ourselves for our wives. Are you willing to die for your wife? Are you willing today to hear the voice of God calling to you and to say to you that you need to die to yourself? You need to die to your own desires? You need to die to what you want and what you expect and become the husband, to become that, that man that God wants you to be towards your wife. We look at this verse. This verse instructs husbands to love their wives, not to be harsh with them, and emphasizes the need for kindness and respect within the marriage relationship. Similarly, we see that 1 Peter 3 verse 7 highlights the importance of husbands that needs to treat their wives with understanding and show them honor as fellow heirs of God's grace. In 1 Peter 3 verse 7 that I've uh, mentioned, it states, in the same way you married men should live considerately with your wives, with an intelligent recognition of the marriage relation, 
honoring the woman as physically the weaker, but realizing that you are joint heirs of the grace of God's unmerited favor of life in order that your prayers may not be hindered and cut off. Otherwise, you cannot pray effectively. Let me be very straightforward with you this morning. Husband, if you do not honor your wife as the weaker vessel, and if you do not understand that your joint is of God's grace, and you fail to love according to these standards, the scripture here clearly tells us that your prayers will be hindered and cut off. God will not hear your prayers. Let me say to you now, just have a sense of words of knowledge coming to me at the moment. Some of you listening and watching this video, and I want to say to you, your reason for not getting a job, your reason for not finding your financial breakthrough, your reason that you don't see your breakthrough in your day-to-day -day life and how you live and how you operate and how you function and you don't see and taste the goodness of the Lord is because you have broken covenant. You have broken covenant with your wife. You are not treating her with the respect and with the honor that God requires from you. And again, I want to say to you, I don't care what she's done to you. You can go and, and, and study the scriptures on how God kept on sending the prophet back to the prostitute wife, and he had to continue to go back. And that to us, to you and me, is a demonstration of God's love towards the church. And that is a demonstration of how the love of a husband should be towards his wife. It's important to recognize that respecting marriage is, guys, not a one-sided obligation. Both spouses in marriage are called to honor and to cherish one another. The Bible teaches that marriage is a covenantal relationship, a partnership, that is built on mutual love and respect and support. And when spouses treat each other with dignity and honor, they contribute to the strength and the health of their marriage and also then becomes the demonstration of Christ and his church. I want to encourage you to go and study the book of Hosea, the life of Hosea and Gomer. How the wife continually, Gomer, how she continually failed Hosea. But he kept on being faithful, going and fetching. And to what extent, husbands, are you willing to sacrifice yourself to become that man that we see demonstrated in the life of Jose. I truly believe with all of my heart that is what God expects from us. And I want to invite you as, as couples, as husbands, as wives, to begin to seek this dimension in your marriage of where you are truly appreciating one another, loving one another, forgiving one another, and above all, respect and honor your marriage relationship with one another. Let me also say to you, your wife is not your possession. And uh, one of the other things that destroys marriage is jealousy, but I will speak to that aspect in one of the other sessions. God bless you as you meditate upon this word, and it's truly my prayer that as you listen to these series that I will be posting, that um, God will deal with your heart and will bring alignment to where you are at and where you need to be in your marriage relationship. Just in the, as a concluding thought, remember that your relationship with your spiritual father and his household is also a marriage relationship. It's a covenantal relationship. So many of these principles also applies 
your relationship with your spiritual father. Well, God bless you. Until next time, we speak. We'll speak soon again. God bless and may the Lord really bless you as you meditate upon this word in Jesus' name. God bless. Until next time.